Well, hello, everybody. Jim Millman here with the Big Sioux Media Sports Network. I'm uh, with coach of the uh, 2024 Class B Boys State Runner-Up, uh, Jeff Grunhagen. Coach, thanks for joining us. You bet. It's always fun to be on. Yeah, it's. Uh, I was telling you the other day, I... Uh, I drove back and forth to Aberdeen each day, so I had a lot of time to think about <laughs> stuff and come up with stuff. So I appreciate you you doing this. We always feels like just yesterday we we started the the season, and I said, "Hey, we should do it more this year." And then I think I got you on twice. So right, yeah, <laughs> we didn't get a lot of just one on one time to talk basketball, and yeah, it doesn't seem that long ago that we it was just Thanksgiving and game one was looming ten days away from that. Right. Right, exactly. All right, well, we'll get started. So for the second year in a row, you came into the season after graduating a player that went on to play Division One basketball, something that not a lot of coaches get to say. So does that affect how you prepare for a season at all, and if so, how? Uh, not the fact that they were Division One guys, but I think just more that Kalen and Damon were, you know, that good of players. You know, they're your leading scorers but did so much other things by playing great defense. Uh, in Damon's case last year, you know, being our leading scorer, leading rebounder, you know, really controlled the paint right. and, uh, and could get out and defend. You know, that we knew yep. if somebody got beat for, to the basket or beat off the dribble, he was going to be there to help change that shot up. Sure. At 6'10", I mean, that's just the obvious that it was. And, uh, yeah, losing him, like, he earned his spot down the stretch of our season – Right. Just by playing good and proving that you know he could take his team to the state tournament and and win those games and and win that title and that was uh, just great. So I think that was probably our biggest question was losing that type of a a talent and a size guy. You know how do you replace that? It was going to be hard and take a group effort to to make up all those rebounds and that that presence in the paint. Yeah, that's one thing about being a high school coach. You get a different team every year to kind of put the, the puzzle pieces together. Yeah, because that was uh, for sure a tough one. I think it was just a, you know, when we lost Kalen, you know, it wasn't just Kalen. It was Red Ostis, Tori yeah. Holland, Blake Van Regen, Mortar, Colt Wilkinson. So your entire crew of starters, role players, practice players, everything kind of went out the door that year. Right. And we knew we were just bringing in – you know, three juniors and a couple of sophomores, then we're going to start because at that time Caden was the only one starting for us as a sophomore. Sure, sure. So um, going into this year, you had seven returning seniors, and then you have uh, the little brother, Grant Wilkinson, the 6'8 sophomore. What were your thoughts and expectations going into this year? I thought we could get into be in the, you know, when the season started, I thought we would come out in the top five somewhere of the Class B teams. And for sure knew we could make it back to Aberdeen to the state tournament. You know, we, we had that much talent coming back in there. The seniors coming in that were going to replace Casey Jansen, Gannon Gruenhagen, mm -hmm. were of equal talent. You know, they were, they were those guys, and they now had another year to grow also. So sure. we knew we could fill those shoes. Damon's shoes was the big question. You know, who would step in there? You know, I was kind of counting on George Jensen and Trace Van yep. Regenmorter to come in and be those guys, and they really did do that, you know. Sure. So that was kind of our expectations. And then as the season, uh, you know, got off to a start in game one or two, you know, I find myself being a little bit nervous as we were in the summertime. Yeah. It was hard to fill that void of getting those rebounds. I don't think we realized how – how much of a presence Case and Jansen was in there at six foot five, sure. being a good shooter, you know, and changing shots, but getting his hands on rebounds and tipping stuff all over, yep. as we had noticed from him the summer before. So, sure. you know, that was kind of where we were at. Was how was you know how much of the the summertime, the stuff we saw there was going to just jump right into the first week of the season. Yeah, and you you know you had those seven guys who had been around for a long time. Um, they. They won a lot of basketball games. How important is it in high school basketball just to have to know how to win basketball games? Yeah, it's important for those guys, you know, to come up through that junior high, you know, JV level and learn how to go and win those games. Like you said, there's a few games in our schedule that are just really easy on the JV because maybe kids in their class when they were freshmen or sophomores are starting for the other towns around yeah. here. Yeah. And a lot of these guys also would have been four-year starters maybe at any other school around here, they just had a lot of guys right in front of them, sure. which, you know, truly made us better. 
yep. it doesn't uh, – I think that's why we don't have a whole bunch of thousand point scores in Dismet yet, is because everything gets so balanced and it just pushes you up the ladder, and and it's fun to do it that way. Well, you know, even with Kalen and his two thousand points, he could have had a lot more, but he had such a good team around him. Yeah, I said we, a lot of those players that are scorers and get those records, you know, they play thirty two minutes a night. They right. don't come out very much. Where he was lucky to get into the third quarter. Right. Or, you know, and probably sat a little bit in the first half yep. just because we were deep enough to get other guys in and, and let them get experience, you know, just, you know, for the days you say, hey, we might be in foul trouble, we might have an injury, so you need to be in here playing. And right. so, you know, we always we always didn't think about the, you know, didn't worry about the career records and stuff. We let those points come as they were and, right. and just play basketball. Very good. So uh, we'll kind of – kind of take a, a cruise through the year this year um at the very first game of the year we go to white go to dubrook grant wilkinson puts up 27 points off the bench did you expect that out of him and uh, did that change your strategy or your game plan for the rest of the year i think i knew he could do that you know because he he just is that big i mean his length and the size you know he yeah. if he bumps into you he does not move you move <laughs> so you know, if he gets posted up and that night he was turning and just putting him in and they didn't have anybody to match his height, they had a, a kid that was bigger, you know, maybe 240, 250, but just couldn't match, you know, what was going on and he was just catching it and uh, just turning and putting him in pretty easily. Right. And I think that caught maybe Dubrook off guard a little bit that he would be able to be that efficient in the lane. Sure. And we weren't expecting to use him that much. We thought we would also – you know, be taking it right at him anyway. We knew they were very athletic, had a great football run, started a lot of seniors. Right. And, you know, they were technically probably heavier than us at every other spot except Grant. Sure. As that goes. But, you know, we uh, battled that game on, and they kind of stayed in it. But turns out, you know, we needed him to be in the paint. Yeah. And a lot of those then he just picked up a lot of rebounds. You know, we kept shooting it, and he got boards and just put them back in. So that was, a, you know, really a bright spot for us that early in the season that he could do that sure and do you think that then affected how other teams looked at dismit going forward that happening in the first game yeah i think everybody had to have a plan for they knew we probably weren't going to start grant but he was coming in really fast you know he's going to come in in the first two to three minutes so uh, we found a lot of teams bringing another one of their players in to guard him or change into zone or do stuff so that helped us to to plan for that as we went on and preparing for games. Sure, sure. So then uh, you you start out the game with a three-game winning streak. In the fourth game of the year, you had, uh, we'll call it a minor setback with that loss against uh, Del Rapids St. Mary. Up to that point, and, and you and I talked about this before, the Bulldogs had not lost to a Class B school in well over two years. So what kind of impact did that have on the team going forward? I think when, uh, you know, we never talked about the streak. I mean, I never really knew about it until after the game. I think somebody put it on yep. Twitter or something, and I was like, well, yeah, that's a, you know, that's too bad, but, you know, we got to move on. We're, sure. Our goal is to make it to the state tournament and uh, and see what we can do when we get there so we won't worry about the streak. We knew it's always hard to go to Del Rapids and play down there. It is. You know, it's like uh, it's a good home court advantage for those guys, but, you know, we didn't think we would have any trouble. We didn't have any trouble in the summertime when we played them. But as I always say, summer basketball, summer basketball, it's sure. not the same when when the people are in the stands and and uh, they're playing for uh, looking at the scoreboard a little closer at that one. So, But a good, uh, you know, after we watched that film back, you know, we looked at ourselves and, and said, you know, what kind of effort did we give there? And it really wasn't a very good one. We, yeah. were, we were not solid team-wise, team effort, even, uh, you know, man-on-man, one-on-one. We weren't very good that night either. You know, they kind of got down Mm -hmm. the paint on us and earned some easy shots, you know. And if you give them open shots at the outside, once they get a little momentum, you know, they're good basketball players. Beckman's going to hit his shots because as the game gets faster for him, I think he scores more efficiently, you know, as it gets going. Right. You know, and something else we talked about too is as the three-time defending state champion, you're going to get the other team's best every night, their best effort. Yeah, we've been the, you know, the three-time state champs. Everybody's kind of wanting to somebody to knock us off at some point. Right. Uh, the Dakota Valley Conference, we've had that locked up for four years, and you know people wanted a piece of that back. Right. And it's just a a tough conference. Dismet Castlewood Dell St. Mary's has been bobbing at the top of that for the last few years. Right. So um, 
after that loss, then the very next night, you had kind of a tough challenge there. You you go all the way to Del Rapids, which uh, 84 miles, and then uh, mm-hmm. the very next night, you go over to Clear Lake and take on, uh, they're still in A school, correct? Correct. So um, you, you went right back on the next night after a long road trip, and you beat Duel, and then proceeded on a five-game winning streak. How important was it for the team to return to their winning ways right away, like even the next night? Yeah, it was important. We were a little worried about that road trip up to Duel because that's another place where it's a long trip. Uh, it was a doubleheader, so yeah. the games are long. And, you know, just going up there, they have a team that has been playing together for a long time. Trey Mayland can, you know, I think he yeah. put up 40 or something the something week before. Like that, yeah. And we know he's a very dangerous guy. They didn't have a lot of size. But it was, uh, I said, very important for us to go out and play defense, you know, and approach that into, you know, we knew what our schedule was coming into this season and to remain in the seedings where you want to be. You didn't want to get into the bottom half of the the round of 16, so you have to go out and get on the road and and play well on the road. And we did that that night, you know, made some shots, settled in, and and it was kind of a fun game there to – to get out and prove that we can just get out and, you know, and handle a team that we are better than. Sure. So speaking of that, uh, we had, what, seven home games this year? It was seven or eight. Was I believe seven or eight year. is usually what so, we get. So how do you handle a season like that when you're going to be on the road most of the time? Well, and that's about all the, the home games we've been getting just because of the four classics. That sure. It takes a couple out. Sure. So you know your schedule. You know, and last year we thought, you know, it was tough on the road at Hamlin, at Castlewood, right, and uh, we lost the one at Hamlin, uh, really beat Castlewood fairly easily up there, just played really well, Mm -hmm. and uh, we knew coming in this year that that was always our stretch, you know, was, okay, those games are at home, so we were more comfortable with that happening at that point, just because you don't have to be on the road when you're playing every other day, and I think our schedule early on was that way. We had games kind of every other day. There wasn't many days to practice two days in a row, or get a day off if you did get somebody banged up or hurt. So it was going to be tough, and we, we knew that coming in, but I think the guys were ready for those challenges to get up and go. Yeah, you guys got to know Mr. Todd pretty well right away, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seemed like we were on the road all the time. That's you know, right. And then, uh, then we got a stretch of home games, and then that was really nice there in February. Yeah, absolutely. February is a good month to have home games yep. for sure in South Dakota. So uh, – The final game of that five-game win streak was against the Howard Tigers. You didn't know the significance of that game going in, but uh, Bulldogs won that game by 10 points. At the end of that game, did you have a feeling that you might be seeing them again in the postseason? Yeah, we knew they would have a pretty good chance to, you know, to get out of their region, and it's always been the last few years down there, that region has been the one with a lot of upsets right? and uh, always some different teams coming out of there. Now, even this year, Howard, I think, escaped uh, Bridgewater Emory. Maybe that was Dell St. Mary's, Bridgewater Emory twice sure. in one-point games, right. just uh, one at the end of the season and one in the region. And that's kind of with Howard. They had been beat by Elkton a couple years before, you know, and got upset. So, you know, you knew two teams that were going to be good or good teams were coming out of that region, just didn't know which two would be. But I said, Howard was right there in the ratings all year, and that's kind of where I pegged them at to uh, Capsule. And Kepsel with that size, you know, they knew it was good. And the rest of their kids are good, you know, good shooters, good three-point shooters. And that's the way we went down there that night was, hey, we're playing on their court. We know we can't overhelp. We can't be inside. we got to get up to the three-pointers, you know, and control the boards. Right. So uh, so you get by Howard, and then uh, you, you look at the schedule after the Howard game, Howard game, and you've got two ranked A schools in Hamlin and St. Thomas More, and then Castlewood all back to back to back. You kind of mentioned that stretch. What was the mindset of the team going into that three game stretch? That one I think we knew was going to be tough. You know, we wanted to, it was in our gym. You know, we wanted to make sure we could try to win that game. We knew that would give us the, the little bit of advantage that we wanted to. And, you know, approaching that game, I know the guys were really locked in. You know, and we came out and played like that. We got through, I think, the first three quarters there. I think they took the lead back just at the end of the third quarter yeah. and then hit a few back-to-back threes to start the fourth. And then they kind of kept us off the boards, and we got one shot and we're done, and they just kept extending that lead a little bit. So, so that was going to be tough. You know, to me, that Saturday game, that made that one really tough down there when now we had dropped one to Dell St. Mary's and we had lost to Hamlin. And we knew we had Castlewood 
you know, looking in there. We try to tell the players, you know, to not look ahead. Let's just go one game. Right. But you know they're looking at that one, too, at home because that's always a game we want to get. And uh, to throw a St. Thomas Moore in there, which is traditionally physical and well coached and, right. you know, it might be low scoring because they might – run a lot of set stuff and so you never know you never know how you're going to shoot it in the corn palace and and now we spend a lot of energy on thursday night yeah <laughs> right? yeah playing hamlin so it's a it's a different uh was a different time there for sure but i think the kids really approached it well in that you know hey we got by the hamlin one they you know they're a really good team they're not going to lose to many teams so let's move on and, and go get st thomas more one thing I noticed about that St. Thomas Moore game um, was kind of a turning point in the year because uh, you guys attacked them so much on defense, on offense. They, uh, I mean, for a while there, they didn't get it across half court. You know, I think they were um, a, a little bit spellbound by that. Is that something that you talked about and planned for, or just the kids came well, out Well, we, we've been trying to press, you know, a little bit at the start of every game and, and get up and see what the other teams have. And we knew off of the films that – you know, they couldn't handle it super. You know, they okay. were a little bit skeptical of, of some pressure type stuff. Sure. And then, uh, you know, if teams aren't quicker than we are, Tom and Caden and Britt can really recover so fast up there at the sure. front of that press. And then once they get a, a handle on how you can dribble it and, you know, they get, they really take advantage of that. I mean, they're really smart guys that way. And, right. And they did that night. They got their hands on a lot of stuff. Caden tipped a lot of passes up there just sitting on things. And, and that really got us running because when we get running, I mean, then them guys just go play basketball. They stop thinking about everything that's going on. And, and then they're just really good when they get going that sure. fast. Yeah, you mentioned Caden. I remember saying about halfway through that second quarter, Caden came to play tonight. And he kind of uh, – in my opinion, at least, and I'd be interested to get your opinion, uh, I feel like the rest of the team fed off him in that game. Yeah, he was tipping and diving and getting stuff, and then once he starts taking off and kind of creates the chaos, uh, Britt Carlson did that down the stretch for us a little bit, Was right. made some plays in there. But that day, uh, Caden was really the one that was kind of getting after stuff, and, and then that turned into he was going down the lane offensively too and, and being really aggressive with the ball. So I think that was just a – a fun game for those guys to be at the Corn Palace, you know, and they and they keep an eye on the seedings and how things are going to play out because by then you're starting to, to get a feel for the other teams in the state right. and, and they know that, hey, you know, St. Thomas Moore is going to get 15 wins of their own and, and that will be a 52 for us. So they, they just put a little extra into that to sure. get up there. Sure, sure. So um, after that loss to Ca- Castlewood then, the, the Bulldogs didn't lose again in the regular season. In fact, you went on a 13-game winning streak that took you through the semifinals with wins over tough teams like uh, Canastota, Sioux Valley, Flandreau, Wolsey Westington, just to name a few. Uh, how does having to play so many tough teams in a season prepare you for the postseason? I think that really that really helps prepare us for you know things that happen in games. Uh, uh, the Castlewood game here at home is just a back and forth, 42-40. I think we miss a shot in the lane, which was a good shot. And then we have to start fouling. They right. made their free throws. And uh, so that was, you know, disappointing for us. We couldn't get that, one, especially being a home game. But then we know we have to go to Canastota, where, again, tough place to play. Uh, Ortman's been playing really good. And then he comes out in the first half and is just dropping shots. You know, pull up. You're not going to block many of those. Right. And uh, it's just a neck-and-neck neck game, back and forth, back and forth. You know, it's like how are we going to how are we gonna stop that? And uh, – I know in that game, too, I kind of find out later that, you know, like Caden wasn't feeling very good when the game started, and a couple okay. other guys, too, were using the bathroom a lot, that okay. type of thing. And the, I don't know if it was kind of the start of the flu or a few guys weren't in school after that game. So it was like, okay, maybe that was why we started out a little bit. But to go out and say, hey, we're going to use our zone today, our one through one and this is what we have to do. And then we went out, and I think it was like 20 to 2 or 4, in the fourth quarter, we outscored them and, yeah, and just to took two, that to I town. And, and, you know, it was great to those that they could just adjust to that and go do it Yeah, you know, in those games like that, in that big, you know, where everybody's watching that game. And, and uh, I said, Kansas sort of had a really good team in there. We just were fortunate that night that we could run away with that one in the end. Yeah. So uh, the Bulldogs then go into the region tournament as the number one seed in the region. Uh, talk about the advantage of being a number one seed and what you thought about the team's performance in those first two games against Arlington and Dubra. Yeah, the region was good. You know, we were 
we're always worried sometimes that uh, Woolsey Weston, they don't play as tough a schedule as us or Castlewood. Right. And, you know, being in Lake Central Conference this year, we knew we are going to play a lot of the same teams, but this year we didn't know how the wins and losses were going to stack up in that with Sioux Valley and Hamlin and Castlewood. Sure. So, you know, we knew everybody could beat everybody up if it worked out that way. And, you know, fortunate for us, that game in the Pentagon with Sioux Valley, again, that was maybe our best game, you know, to uh, – in the middle of the season, the best we had played from start to finish. Sure. I yeah. say that was one where I walk into the locker room and I can see those guys are are sitting there and they are ready to go in that one. You know, they're already a little bit red in the face. They're they're pumped up and, and to go out and, and get that one done in overtime. And it was just a, a huge battle for those guys to, to do that on that floor where we had lost a couple games over their careers. You know, the Dream City game where those guys were in, the uh, – <clears throat> last year against T yeah. game we had the lead and then we kind of lost at the end there you know and they were like we are not going to let this this happen this year to you know so to get that one done and know that we could stay ahead of you know the uh Castlewood and Wolsey in that region because I said it's Wolsey plays a little lesser schedule if we uh Castlewood and us lose games then we might be the 2-3 and we might play in the region you know that's the that's the real the real downfall of right. that is like, hey, that might be the, the better two teams in the region this year are playing, and somebody's not even going to the Sodak 16 to get out of that. Sure. So um, going into the round of 16 then, the Bulldogs were the two overall seed and uh, took on Timber Lake, the 15 seed. Were you surprised at how tough of a matchup that ended up being? I knew they were going to be pretty good. They'd been shooting it well. They kind of had come on the last part of – of the season, the films we watched back, and they would be scrappy, you know, and we were going to go, you know, out to Miller, and uh, it's just sometimes hard to go out there and go. You know, we've been there before and played. They've played at Redfield. We played Timberlake three years ago and the same thing, but you still have to come ready to play. And I thought our guys kind of overlooked that just a little bit, that we didn't get them, you know, we didn't get their focus quite hard enough that this is going to be, you know, we figured we had the size advantage. They didn't look uh, great on film, but I'm like, you know, they can shoot some shots, and and we actually let them get down the paint and make some layups and make some easy shots, and they were digging, scratching, clawing for the ball, and you know, then we pick up a couple of small injuries in that game, so we're a little shorthanded for a little while, and then I think our guys started just thinking about it too much, and, and luckily for them, or for us, we just kept on, you know, battling down the stretch and looking at the scoreboard and just maintaining the lead. You know, they kind of caught right up to us, but the guys, like, they looked up there, and then we got shots to the rim. We found George in the paint. We found Grant down there. And uh, so, you know, good to go. And we were like, well, you know, as long as you win in the Sodak 16, you're going to the state tournament. Sure. We don't care what the score turns sure. out. Sure. So I just off of memory here, it was with about five minutes to go, they got within two points. You went in to the uh, end of the third quarter with a 10-point lead. They knock it all the way down to two. Yep. Uh, what's going through your head at that point? Yeah, then I, I was like, you know, we need to make sure we make a basket down here at this end and get back because they had just come down and literally dribbled down and shot two three-pointers in a row where we didn't really get a hand up, you know, and just they are sure. just farther away than we thought we should guard them, and, and those shots went in. And that sometimes changes a high school game just like that. If If you don't have to worry about who's getting the rebound, it's just coming out of the net. For them, they were doing pretty good, so – Again, then we kind of picked up that a little bit of intensity and, and went down and got our own basket, and uh, then we kind of settled in and, and put that lead back to where it should be. And uh, one thing I kind of noticed, too, about that game is, uh, you know, we're known for, for defense. Defense wins championships, and they really came out and, and face-guarded us and uh, kind of played in-your-face defense, and that's uh, not r- something we really are on the receiving end of much. It's something we're usually giving out. Right. I think we went a few games where we didn't have that in there, you know, and uh, the region was no different. Woolsey at the end of the game, or <clears throat> sorry, at the end of the Woolsey game regular season, they came out and tried to get up and pressure us, and we did fumble it around a little bit at that point. Sure. So I think we knew that, hey, we need to get up here and handle the ball. We didn't think people could do that. We thought we could get by, and they were touching balls and knocking them loose, and, you know, that's just uh, a little more hustle on them than by our part, but like I said, the guys were – you know, good enough to, you know, look at that scoreboard and, and get buckled down and, and bear down and get that lead back. I uh, 
I, I have to ask, how how do you go most of the first quarter with playing with a girls basketball? Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. And, you know, I kept asking our guys, you know, the guys that had it, if they noticed, they're like, no, not really. Nobody had, uh, I don't think anybody shot free throws. Sure. You know, that type of thing. They're just out going from one yeah. end to the other and, and feel slippery. And because generally we tell them in the round of 16, it's going to be a new ball, you know, so we always have some new basketballs here. So <clears throat> we're getting a new ball out that's kind of sticky and, oh, and sure. stuff like that. So okay. it's, so it matches what we're going to do. And, you know, I never really thought of it. I know I saw – uh, before the game, I saw the refs with the ball and stuff because I was looking at it to see how how shiny it was or sure. whatever. Just one of those things when you're standing around, and and I knew one of the the refs there, and I'm just like, eh, looks like you know. I saw him hold it up kind of one handed, and not he's a big tall guy. I just assumed didn't think anything of it. <laughs> so who uh, was it? Timberlake then that pointed it I out. Timberlake or? was shooting free throws, and okay, and okay. my players told me after the game they're like, oh yeah, that. Uh, guy that was shooting free throws i think it was it was 13 the guy that played in the post i believe okay uh, rough surface sure i think he said you know he was trying to tell the ref that the ball was not was not right and they said the ref was almost you know scolding him or looking at him like why are you talking to me <laughs> type they said sure. it's not the right basketball you know and finally <laughs> he took it you know he just bounced it to him and the guy looked at it and then that was when they found out that for sure it was not a basketball sure <laughs> So, so you get the win over Timberlake. Uh, you earn your right to go to your sixth state tournament in a row, counting the COVID year where you qualify, but yep. we don't play. Um, how does that affect the mindset of the team, knowing they've been there before? They've been there so many years in a row. I, I think it just makes it uh, just so much more relaxed, and you know they're not easily distracted. They know they can go. <clears throat> they know they're going to have fun. They kind of know what they're going to do. Sure, hang out. They'll see. You know, players off other teams, you know, they don't go walking around the hotel, but the guys they know from summer basketball and over the years, you know, they'll find them in the hotel or talk to them. And uh, so they just know that, hey, we've been here before. This is the routine. It's fun. You know, it's not, you know, we've figured out how to keep them from being super tired, that type of stuff, keep their day moving along just a little bit. And and uh, so I think it's just relaxing to do that. And uh, being in the, the first night game was perfect again where we had our day to prepare. Sure. And then just go to the gym just like a round of 16 game and, and get in the locker room and come out and see that place fill up and makes it really fun. Yeah, playing at 6 o'clock is more or less normal. Right. And uh, I, I man- imagine that's just such an advantage for, for you as coaches even to, to see how kids have reacted in the past and be able to – to make adjustments on that just like you would a basketball game. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of uh, one of those things you just got to watch what goes on. This year we are fortunate we didn't really have anybody that wasn't feeling good, that sure. type of thing. We've we've kind of had some of that in the past and the, the humidifiers and, and plan ahead <laughs> for stuff like that sure. for, for that. But So this year was pretty good that way. The weather really helps when it's not super cold out. Right. It just makes it a lot easier to, to move around in Aberdeen and, and just to, to not be worried about stuff and – yeah, you're never thinking about that as a coach, stuff like humidifiers and stuff right. like that. Yeah. Right, and that's good. Like this year, too, we didn't, you know, if we need something, the moms are there, and it just has been that way over the years that, sure. you know, you just shoot out a text or pick up a phone, and, and whatever you want shows up at your hotel. So, sure. so that's been really great. So the first game of the tournament matched the Bulldogs against Gregory. Uh, talk about that matchup and how you prepared for that game. Yeah, we knew that would be a really tough matchup. They had been playing really good. And, uh, you know, they had played some teams with size, and they played them really well. We knew they were going to be really physical because, you know, they can be 6'7", 6'5", 6'5", 6'4", 6'2". And we thought that would be a little bit of a problem for us just guarding them at certain points, you know, keeping them from, you know, and mainly boxing out and just getting rebounds. We knew George could probably match up with Mitchell. But then the rest of the guys, you know, it's like, well, we can take one six five guy on with Trace, no problem. Sure. Then Britt and Caden and those guys, how will they play into that? You know, and they hit a lot of shots, kind of pull up jump shots at the free throw line that it's hard to block those if you're the same height. And that's that's what they had shown on film is that they they are willing to do that. They're gonna, you know, just get coming at you a little bit and stop, pull up and shoot and and then to counter that, you know, Mitchell's really good from the three-point line, and uh, Clunt and Bearshield, too, were going to be really good from the three-point line. So that was going to be a, a very tough matchup, and that's kind of how we approached it was, hey, it's going to take 
our best effort to get down there. And uh, and we knew even if Mitchell was going to post up George or Trace, we we're going to have to give him a little help too because, you know, we can't get up and block that shot. He's going to get above us and, and drop those things in. Sure. Oh, and you mentioned it, and I noticed it as well. They made a lot of tough shots with hands in their face, right? You, like you said, right at the free throw line. So you say they, they had done that before you saw that yep, on film? Yep, that's kind of their their – I don't know their team scheme. I mean, okay. they're. I would compare them to us as they're pretty balanced. They weren't. They weren't just drawn up and screening for one guy. They were kind of running their same plays, and whoever was was feeling like, hey, I'm. I came off this screen, and I had a. I had a step. I'm going to pull up and shoot it. You know, right. they weren't looking for just one guy to do that. So then it's you know almost makes it harder to defend if everybody's for just sure. running that kind of motion. And and I thought there in the uh, I believe the fourth quarter, they hit two of those right at the free throw line, and then Clunt came and just pulled up and shot a three-pointer from beyond the, the second line before right. Caden even really had a hand up. You know, and that was the scary part of them is they, are, they, they can do that. They can hit those shots. Sure. So uh, the ending to that Gregory game was uh, maybe one of the most exciting endings to a high school basketball game that I've ever seen. Talk about what play you drew up in the huddle, how close – was what we saw to what you drew up and uh, your thoughts when that shot went in. Yeah, that one there when you said when it was tied. So we knew, well, you know, at least it's tied. We got up and took our time out, and we were going to try to run that ball in and get a, <clears throat> a ball screen there for Tom coming over the top to see what we would get out of that. Sure. And uh, after that didn't happen, I said it wound up being a we couldn't inbound it right away to get that set up because they had denied Caden going up there. So I believe uh, George came and got it, gave it to Tom, who went over the the screen, and then George just popped back. Well, Tom kind of got cut off, came back, and just threw it to him. And then George made just a nice move, and I didn't realize how good of a move he had made until I watched it back on the film. Sure. But, you know, he drove to the basket, took a good hard jab step, and Mitchell had to back up two steps. And then he just made a nice step back three. But at the very end on that film, he just sees that hand coming. So George's release goes just a little bit higher, causing that ball to go high. And when I saw that from my vantage point just standing there, I was like, boy, that looks like an air ball to me right now (laughs) because it's way, way too high than George usually shoots. And when that just banked right in, it was that was just one of the craziest, uh, craziest feelings I've had. Yeah, we I was sitting right behind you and uh, I felt like that ball was in the air for an eternity. There's so many thoughts that can go through your head. I can't imagine for you. But yeah, like I said, I was just watching that thinking, God, it's just it's so (laughs) high, you know, and because I saw him coming right at I just had the perfect vantage point where it's like Mitchell was coming right at me, just jumping up there and. Uh, just a great shot, but just a great dribble. The more I watched it back, to to back him off and go. So there's there's advantages and disadvantages to a game like that. Disadvantages you you've spent a lot of energy already. Um, advantages uh, momentum. Uh, yep. What are, what are you talking to the kids about in the locker room after that game? Well, like right after that one, it's you know it's like, uh, hey, you guys, you know, really did a great job playing defense, battling. You know, tied at I believe thirty seven. And it's just like, you know, to get that shot to go in, you know. And I honestly told him, I said, you know, sometimes it's just good to be lucky. Yeah. But, you know, you got yourself in that position to get that shot off. It didn't get blocked. You know, we didn't have to worry about whether it was a foul or not a foul. This is just a good shot to get off. You know, as, hey, if we don't make it, we're going to overtime. No big deal. And we ended that game right there. I said just gives them guys that confidence to to go forward, knowing that when the game is in the balance and it's close, you know, we've done that before too. We can get that one shot that we need. So game two then, uh, rematch against Castlewood. Talk about your preparation for that rematch and uh, what you thought the team – what you thought of the team's performance in that game? Yeah, we uh, prepared for that one. You know, we watched some of our film, but then we watched a lot of their film to see what you know they were doing a little bit differently. And they really did down the stretch start to use Lau a lot. You know, they were yeah. they were doing that. But uh, to me, Kessler was the next kind of crazy. Uh, I don't know what you'd call that the kind of the gray area there because he'd been shooting it a lot and he jumps high. You know, he's yeah. a little taller than Tom. But in the game here in DeSmet, Tom just really controlled him. I mean, really flustered him. 
Uh, I think the one time he, uh, Kessler picked up a foul because he just shoved Tom with both hands to, yeah. get him, to get him out of the way. And, you know, so that was our, our goal was, hey, you know, our matchups were good the last time. You know, we can do that again because we know, like, Caden and Lane Tweet are, are going to be that Caden is going to control that. He's going to keep him in front of him. He's not going to get down, so we're following him, putting him at the free throw line. So we knew that that would be uh, Tom and Kessler would be a big matchup. Sure. You know, and then we would have to help a little bit with Lau just because he is that big, you know, and not get buried by him. And I thought we really did that well. Uh, in that game uh, coming in, you know, the, the performance-wise was excellent. You know, the effort was awesome. We got out there and put pressure on him. Didn't give him open threes. And I know Tweet uh, in the first quarter, you know, came right down the lane hard looking to get to that free throw line. And, and he scored, I think, six or eight points kind of right away. And it took us just a minute, you know, to, to get that because that didn't really happen here in DeSmith that much. Right. And it took us a while to just adjust to that a little bit. But then Trace and Grant uh, kind of tag teaming in on Lowey kind of kept him a little off balance. Because Trace did a nice job, got a, a huge block on him right in the fourth quarter down there, down the stretch, after he had just scored one on a post up, and then he jumped out from behind a few times, you know, because he can't just hold him there forever. Right. And he jumped out and tips a pass away, you know, and then he had the Castlewood guys kind of second guessing whether they could put that in there. Sure. And then that forced them to go back to taking a few more threes, and and even Grant, you know, he got a block on him, he got a few rebounds out there, and played with a little extra step in that game. And he was just huge in that, that he could do that. And, and then Trace could move around and guard somebody else, but more or less stay fresh by, by running in and out. So I thought just a great defensive effort for us to keep those guys who put up, what, 82 or something or 72 the next night against White River. And right. uh, you know, we just kept them off balance all night and never let them get in that rhythm. And I know the kids were you know, so excited with that one to, to make sure we got that win done. Yeah, the next night you can definitely tell that that tweet uh, felt a little bit freer that yep. th- the next night for sure. Yeah, it's always the you know the third place game just is a little more less stressful because of what's on the line in that Friday night game. Absolutely. So uh, you make it to then your fifth state championship in a row, which is crazy, yeah. right? <laughs> not many, not many guys can say that. Um, so the Bulldogs then were faced with another rematch. This time it was a team that you had beaten earlier. However, the Tigers lost. So we played them. They lost that game. That was their second loss. Then they lost to Hanson was the next game. Yep. And then they didn't lose again. So, uh, y- you know, we, we talk, the, there's a sports terminology kind of running into a buzzsaw a little bit. Talk about the team's mindset going into that championship game. Yeah, we knew they had been playing well. You know, they beat a lot of teams. They beat Canastota, Viberg Hurley, a lot of those teams right down the stretch of their season. Right. So they were having to play at the top of their game right at that right time, and they were doing that. You know, they were making shots, and both capsules were putting up big numbers at that time. So we knew we had to, you know, get up and be physical, make them take shots over us, and kind of try to control the control the boards again as we did down there. You know, we got out at that first time we played them to a 20-something point lead in the right. third quarter and just kind of coasted in there. They cut it to 10 or 12 and and uh, made it close by hitting some outside shots, so we knew they could do that too. So, I mean, we knew the caliber of team they would be, and the way, you know, watched them in the tournament, they were playing really well on Thursday and Friday. They were. They were. Uh, so a few minutes ago I said that the ending of the Gregory game was one of the most exciting endings to a high school game I've ever seen. But as it turned out, that wasn't even the most exciting ending in that tournament. Um, Talk about the play at the end of regulation to send the game into overtime. Um, You know, you you obviously drew up a play, number one. Then Howard gets to see it because of an errant uh, buzzer. Yep, Um, yep. And j- just talk about that play. Yeah, that one I think the – so it's the timeout horn goes off automatically on the clock. Okay. And the teams okay. had come back on the floor before the horn had gone off. So, you know, nobody knew that was going to happen. I so see. they stopped it. But, yeah, they're like – you know, and our guys too are, you know, smart kids playing basketball. They're like, well, now they, they saw where we were going, where the screen was going to be. So we need to change that. So we took another timeout and uh, talked about it. And we changed it just a little bit to okay. be more of a – it was now going to be a, just a full court pass to instead of bringing Tom to the bottom of the circle at half court, we were going to now take Caden, still bring Tom to the top of the circle, but bring Caden on a fly 
all the way down, and Tom could continue up and, and get a screen for him, maybe bump his guy off, and George would be the guy at the back to see you can either get a screen or go get your hands on the ball. So sure. the ball was literally going to Caden fast on the on the fly pattern from Britt Carlson. Okay. And then uh, I said George was watching, to, am I screening or – and he saw the ball coming, so he just went up and just made a phenomenal play. On he went up, got both hands on it, and just pivoted and turned. You know, and that's right at the elbow, I think. And you'll see Caden in the video just kind of going right by him. And uh, Colt Kepsel is also right there trying to get a beat on it. So I think if George doesn't catch it, Colt Kepsel maybe gets a hand on it, so Caden wouldn't have been able to catch it. But by Colt going to the ball, George got up and just like intercepted it and turned and, and made that shot. So how how nice is it to have the high school quarterback <laughs> to, you know, to be able to throw that, that basketball in? Yeah, that. and that's been so big, you know, and we do all year. Uh, Coach Geyer, she has our what we call last second plays. It's for when we don't have a timeout. There's X amount of seconds on the clock, sure. and we're just going to holler one of those at you, and everybody's just going to go to that spot. And that's what we had the first time when the horn went off. We had one of those drawn up, and Britt's always the guy that, yep, you're going to throw it. You know, we have a couple times we let somebody else throw it for the, the fear somebody's fouled out. But for the most part, he's the guy, and it's just nice having that. Hey, I can get it there, and I'll, I'll get it where you want it. Yeah, absolutely. So, obviously, the, the game didn't end the way we wanted it to with the Tigers winning by five. Uh, talk about your feelings after that loss and how proud you were of the Bulldogs as a whole. Oh, yeah, I think we were, you know, we were really, really down after that loss. And I was, you know, personally – you know, I felt really bad. I There's several things in there to play it back. I would do differently sure. type of a thing. And, sure. and I know the kids all feel the same way. There's a lot of, of plays in the game and right down the stretch there where, you know, going back in hindsight, we would, we would do it differently. But, you know, there's not that opportunity. Then we kind of – we slowly got to that point of, you know, hey, we, we, we worked our butts off to get here this year. We were get here. We had that chance. You know, we gave ourselves a chance to win. We extended that game with sheer will to extend that yeah. game and get to overtime. We need to be proud of this. I know it wasn't, you know, we're short of our goal that we set out, and I think that made the, you know, the the award ceremony and stuff too. I look back, I felt kind of bad that I was also not very smiley and, you know, but I think we were just just that had our minds set on, on getting that win and, and uh, you know, it got a little better after, but even in the locker room when we all finally got in there and, and just talking, you know, just seeing how hard it is on those guys, you know, and, and how badly they wanted to win that one, sure. you know, it makes it tough. You know, when you care about something that much, it's just, it's it's so hard. But, you know, when you, we'll look back, you know, as time goes and we'll still smile on all the great plays and the shots and the, because everybody made a big shot. Everybody right. got a block couple of steals we went zone and got three steals in a row and and closed a deficit again and and did all that stuff and then you know the more I talk about it then I'm like well then we should have just kept on going and won the game and and sure. did that you know both <laughs> teams only missing a couple of free throws and stuff like that so it's just uh you know just still super proud of the guys for for the way they just kept battling and battling and battling and and we did that all year and it's just uh said it's fun to be there you know we'd we'd rather be state champions but you know we're state runners up and yeah. and uh you know those those kids are state champions they have been since 2021 and and they will continue to be so that that's the uh, that is the the good part of that is is they can lean on that and just absorb all these memories of of everybody playing great and and it'll be uh and it'll all be all right in the end yeah, it's a game that that you hate to have someone have to lose because that is exactly what you want out of a championship game, right? Yep. You, you see some of these games, teams win by 20 points, the gym starts emptying with five minutes to go, stuff like that. And, uh, I mean, I, I joked with my wife on the way home that uh, tournament took five years off my <laughs> life. You know, it was yep. just really fun to watch yeah, you and guys. I, and I think this, of, of all the tournaments, I want to say this was the loudest year for me on the sideline. I mean, it just seemed like the crowd and maybe it was just that the intensity and the, the back and forth scoring nobody ahead and stuff. Cause we had gone out and actually on Friday, draw up some, some cards to hold up with our plays on it. Because yeah. We noticed a few times we weren't getting everybody on the same page a couple of times. So sure. I had to have uh my daughter and my wife go nice. get some board and cut it up and nice <laughs> and uh, and put some marker to it and and it, and it was handy to use it, and it worked out but you know just one of those things that that goes with the uh, the Barnett Center and 
crazy, crazy loud games. Yeah, get some good hand writing so you're not holding it up and they're like, what? <laughs> that's, why they, that's why they didn't let me do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's that's a good point. So uh, the the we, we've kind of already touched on it. The community community of DeSmit always travels well and always shows up for the team. Talk about the advantage of having such a supportive fan base. Yeah, it's been fun that it's loud. You know, we're one of the, I say kind of one of the few teams that when we go even to the Pentagon, oh, we yeah. can make the Pentagon loud, yep. you know, because usually playing in there, you know, it's not very loud. It's just a, a too big a building unless you get a thousand people in there. Right. But we always get our, you know, 500, it seems like. Right. <laughs> I have no idea what the actual numbers are. But when we go to the Corn Palace, you know, when we go to Brookings, it's always a lot of people go and, and they come. And, uh, you know, when they're there early, the Sodak 16 game, too, when you come out to warm up, you know, people are in the bleachers. It's not like they're just getting there for the tip off. To see those guys and just see that little bit of energy is awesome. And, and in Aberdeen, you know, it's just. Uh, it's fun to see that place fill up with the maroon and gold. And yeah. it's just, uh, it's been nice to have that, you know, in the home games too, even with the live streams and all the feeds, you know, you don't get a ton of other people coming. That's where the, you know, the state tournament comes in that semifinal night. There's so many players and people from other towns that that's what they do every year. They go to that semifinal night to, to feel that energy and, and witness that excitement. Yeah, you, you mentioned showing up early. Uh, going over to Miller, I got there an hour early because I hadn't broadcast from there before. I wanted to see what it was, and I was not the first one there. Right. Yep, that and that's crazy. what uh, – and we've told in the past, I think it was when we – maybe when we went to Redfield a few years ago because we had played in 1819. We went to Miller to play Potter County. Right. Who had a very senior-laden team, was one of the top five all year. And, you know, we were starting a couple of freshmen, a senior, right. and a couple of sophomores. So I know I remember telling a lot of the parents and stuff going, hey, if there's any way you guys could be there that either when we get off the bus or right when we come out of the locker room at 530 to see some people in the gym here would be great so it's not just an empty Sure. empty thing going on and it seems like ever since then you know there's there's a handful of people that are there when we get off the bus and there's people in the crowd when we come out and stretch you know even 30 minutes before tip off just to give those guys just the peace of mind that hey we got a great following and and we're doing this together and all that stuff absolutely so uh as the uh interview winds down here um i wanted to give you a chance to talk about the seven seniors on this team individually and i want to throw mel in there as well since he's not coming sure. back either um so i'll give you the names one at a time we've okay. already talked for about an hour so maybe <laughs> maybe 60 seconds on each kid. right right um so uh and then you just give me your thoughts here tom on tom's been just such a such a leader for for us this season you know and that came up even last season he was the guy that coming off the bench you know he was good with that coming off the bench you know he played maybe as many minutes as the other guys coming out or as many minutes as the starters last year, you know, but he was our guy that he calms everyone. He can tell everyone where to be, you know, and he's not, he's not positive, not negative about it. He just says it as it is. Hey, we're going to do this, this, and this, you know, he's come up with uh, uh, plays during the game. Hey, let's change this one to do this. I noticed and, that. And we'll get a basket here, you know, and, and just always thinking about that, you know, and the last two years, his defense, he's so quick. He has great hands. You know, the guys are wondering, you know, is he going to steal it from me? Has got in for not being a real big guy and, and played physical. And, you know, last year he hit a stretch where he was getting called for body fouls and, yeah. and bumping into people and, you know, wondering, you know, what can I do? I'm like, you have to do that. You can't get him closer to the basket. We have to be able to just, you know, keep on doing that. And, you know, it won't always be a foul. Sometimes it is, but, you know, keep playing that way and keep going. And, you know, just such a, a heady player and, and clutch down the stretch too. You know, that's where – our guys are, if we need a three, we are truly looking to him to get yeah. that shot off. So just a, a great career for Tom. I noticed two or three times in the tournament for sure where uh, you called a play and he called another one and you ran the play that he called. Yep. And uh, and, and it worked all three of those times that I noticed. Yep, a few it. times yeah. where he was wanting like a ball screen or yeah. something off of there because he, he saw the matchup, who was guarding our screener and who was guarding him, and he's like, I can get this off there and go. And then and I always go with that. You know, sure. if somebody wants to change something in the huddle, unless it's a, a where I didn't want it to go, is usually I will always go with what those guys are comfortable doing. Sure. All right, uh, Trace Van Regenmorder. And Trace, just uh, – what a season he had, you know, battled all all last year, you know, wanted more minutes, wanted to do more things, 
And uh, like I said, our seniors really played well. You know, they were he played a little JV ball and, and was really good at that. But this year at the start of the season, that guy came in and made so many uh, 10, 12, 15 rebound nights and got up and played so hard that that just rubbed off on everybody. So he kind of became our what I call our glue guy yeah. that kind of stuck everybody together and, and really picked up that energy. But then a couple games he was double, you know, double digit points, double rebounds and get 10 or 12, you know, the next game he might not score. Right. You know, and then after the game, he'd be a little bit down on not scoring. And I'm like, you had 12 rebounds, you know, four blocks. You know, we didn't need you to score. We were, we were ahead on the, on the scoreboard, you know, but everybody wants to see that those points and stuff. And he really adjusted, you know, as the season went on, it still kind of bothered him a little bit, but he didn't let that affect his play at all. And, sure. and even in the state tournament, I know the championship game, Howard decided to back off and, and maybe see if you could shoot a little bit. And, you know, he came sideline a couple times. He passed up a bunch of shots, and we're like, you know you have to shoot that. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I will, you know. And, and sure enough, then he hits three threes, and, and the game just gets going, and then it's back to normal because now somebody's got to go guard you because you know you're good enough to knock those shots down, and you just did it. So just a, a great attitude this year and, and really helped us lead that way by just being a competitor. I mean, he refused to get pushed around. He guarded all these big guys. You know, he was – I was watching the Castlewood back, and uh, you know, a couple times he just takes Lowey and shoves him a whole foot yeah, or two, you know. Yeah. And, and for just a 200-pound guy, he's doing pretty good at that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the dads were um, were encouraging him in that state championship game. You can make that shot, yep. and then and he did. <laughs> uh, George Jensen. George had just been a uh, a true warrior for us this year. I think that's what our question was coming in was, you know, how hard are you going to play and come down? He had all the tools, you know, the last year. And as a sophomore is really when he came out in the yeah. state tournament yeah. and made some huge plays. That we had back. a couple guys in foul trouble and, you know, got a big, yeah, big rebound put back. And, and you know, we knew he could score from, you know, playing in the JV and stuff that year. Yeah. And then last year had a really nice year and, and blocking stuff and getting dunks. But this year was like, all right, can you take the, hey, everybody knows who you are now. So they're going to come at you and, and body you up and, and guard you with their best guy. And can you take over and handle that? Sure. And he really stepped out. I, I say the Sioux Valley game was huge that he was – because at that time, you know, he was our leading three-point field goal percentage guy. Sure. He shoots about 40% from three. So we're encouraging him to, hey, you know, if we can't get you in the post, you got to pop back out and we'll get you the ball at the three-point line. And he made some huge shots against Sioux Valley just to step over, pull up, and shoot it. And it was, uh, you know, that kind of just continued on down the stretch. He went right at it, and, and it was fun to watch him then want the ball. And I think we saw that in the state tournament. Things were, you know, he was kind of letting everybody else do their thing, but then he just picked up the momentum and going and going and going in that yeah. Castlewood game and uh, popped out, hit a couple threes, and, and uh, it was just fun to see that, that emotion and, and that, true, that true warrior that was in there, we were just waiting for it to come out. Sure, for such a, a mild-mannered kid, kind of Tommy the same way, you know, really the fire came out in that tournament for sure. Yeah, they were, you know, they're kind of such both uh, quiet kids in general, mm -hmm. you know, not doing too much. It's fun being around and to see how they've changed over the years and to see George talking to that because we used to have – we would have, like, Kalen and those guys would always be talking to George when he was younger, trying to encourage him, sure. and now he's doing that same stuff back with Noah Luthmers and those guys, getting them involved, so that's really fun. Yeah, I loved, uh, you know, George makes that shot at the end of the Gregory game and kind of flexed a little bit. And, you you know, you're, you're watching that game as a fan, and you kind of expect that, but we mm -hmm. don't expect that out of George. Right. I, I right. got a kick out yeah, of that. Yeah, it's just been so – and like I said, that Sioux Valley game, there's some highlights in that too the, right. after some of the blocks and stuff that he made was just to, to see him coming out and getting after it like that, then we knew we were, we were going to be good down the, down the stretch of the season. For sure. Caden Fast. Caden, he's just been, you know, such a competitor every, ever since he came up. You know, eighth grade year – uh, what, those guys were up here on our JV and uh, practicing with us, and we would uh, he was just fast enough. At that point, he was one of the tallest of all of them. You know, he was already probably 5'11 by then. I noticed that in those pictures, and, uh, yeah. So 
you know, he got the honor. He got to guard Kalen Gary for a while because he could keep up with him and, and put pressure on him. And sometimes him and Kalen would get into it, and, and Kalen would give him the extra elbow because, you know, Caden's face guarding him sure. or, or just bothering the crap out of him because we told him to. Yeah. And, yep. uh, you know, Kalen didn't like it a few times. But Caden uh, was just a good natural defender. Uh, such speed, and he could always jump. And uh, so we kind of took him on in that way. And I think midway through his sophomore year, you know, he got to get in the starting lineup because we could, you know, we could use that other guy going to do that. You know, Red Ostis, again, another great defender. We're like, hey, we, there's no sense wearing him out when right. you're just as good of a defender maybe. We just need to get you out here too, and we can get Rhett to scoring some baskets and getting going. So, And, uh, and then the last two years, Caden has really picked up his offensive game, became a better shooter, you know, just spent more time getting reps up, shooting three-point shots, and uh, – and has just been really good. And this year, again, uh, he can get around people. He has such a fast first step, and then he jumps so high. Yeah. He just has all those tools to get in there. And he can make a bank shot. He can make a turnaround jump shot. I can go out and make a three. But just the more of he's just blowing by guys and getting all the way to the rim is just his such a fun game to watch him when he gets going. The state tournament was really fun to watch him just do that and, and yeah. get by a lot of people in there. I loved what you said last night that uh, he's kind of the defensive specialist and that's what you expect out of him. But, oh, by the way, you need to go out and score 20 right. points a game. You know, we, we kind of let him go on that sophomore year, and he wasn't getting many shot attempts up. But sure. then again, you have Kalen, Rhett, Torrey, yeah. everybody yeah. else <laughs> is getting shots up. And uh, we're like, yeah, you're probably not going to get a ton of shots up. When you're open and we need one, you'll get some. And he delivered that that year. You right. know, when he was right. open, he knocked down some threes. And, you know, we know he can do it. And now this year, you know, I'm sure he came in feeling, hey, I want to be, you know, I want to lead this team. I want to get 20 a night, you know, and we're like, that should be your target. I mean, yeah. You can, you're a good enough player that, boom, once you're done playing defense, you can go, go get after it on the offensive end too and, and go that. And we had a few nights where, you know, we let him off the hook and maybe the best player for another team was taller. So George drew that assignment and got out of that. And he really enjoys that when he's the guy sneaking from behind and going. And I think he enjoyed like the St. Thomas Moore game was one of those right. games where it was like, all right, you can, you just have a guy that's the same as everybody else. So now you can get off and help because he's really sneaky at getting from behind and, and going the extra mile to, to make a play happen. Very good. Britt Carlson. Britt has been, uh, you know, a great addition to us. The The couple years he's been here has been just fun to coach him, you know, get to know him. And for the most part, just a little bit of a quiet guy, but he's just so intense. I mean, he's competitive. You know, if somebody scores over him, I mean, it's not going to happen again. He's that right. He's that guy. He's pretty focused in. You know, if somebody knocked him down, he might have to go knock that guy back down just to just to prove his point to get in there. And it's just been fun. To the, the way he raises our intensity as a team by getting out in these close games and, you know, trying to make a hustle play, diving on the floor, diving after loose balls. He's been a little banged up from that, but he just gets up and keeps on going. So that's it's really let up. And he's just a, you know, a solid shooter. We yeah. always give him a little bad time because he just loves it in the corners. He's the corner <laughs> shooting does. guy, and if you know if you're if you're ever stuck with the basketball, don't know where to go, just look <laughs> over there because he'll be there. And, yep. and sure enough, state tournament, boom! I think he hit three in the championship game to get us right back in it. And it's just a just a great competitor and a really a, became an energy giver as the year went on. So I know we talked a little bit about the the smiley face on his hand thing, that and, and that was just a. It were those things that went on the last month of the season to, to get him out of, you know, yeah, speed, tense, and practice and everything. But, you know, when that is over, you know, we got to be together and, and then you can just relax and, and, uh, and move on from there. And so it was, it was fun to see it. When I saw him do that himself for the Friday night game and yeah. just that little extra, that extra thing to keep him, keep him focused in and locked in was fun to, to see how much he had. He was, you know, truly part of our group and, and, and a bulldog. Edger Wilkinson. Edge has been fun too. He's been, uh, you know, never complains about not getting a ton of playing time. He's just, you know, not a real big guy, but a crowd favorite. And you know, that guy is a really good three point shooter. <laughs> and he works hard in practice, got after a lot of stuff. And it, it's just fun to have him around. You know, he can, you can give him a hard time, you know, and he still, still will keep it loose with everybody else. And, sure. uh, and it's just been a, a fun guy to keep with that group and get going. And, and, uh, 
you know, we wish you could get them in more games and, you know, in big games type of stuff. We just didn't have that physical stature of places to go with that. But sure. it was fun in games when we're playing, and he did get in, you know, the way the guys look to, you know, hey, let's get him a basket. And, and the way he worked, you know, he yeah. went out and guarded people and he got after it. And that's the way the last few weeks of practice is he really came after the starters and pushed them along a little bit, you know, and, and you know, and that's just fun that, hey, he's keeping them on their edge going, this is what we need to, to get where we want to go. Sure. Tristan Olson. And Tristan, he's been such a, you know, hard worker and uh, really got better. You know, he decided that, hey, I'm not great at driving, ball handling, so he became a really good three-point shooter, you know, last year in his junior season and carried that into this year that, hey, and that's what we tell him, you know, we, you know, we don't expect you to beat three guys, reverse pivot, dribble, get to the rim. You know, we just want you to handle the ball, get out, but also became such a great defender, a tough kid. I mean, he's going to set you a screen. He's going to get over another screen. He's going to box somebody out. If somebody wants to be physical, he's going to be physical and give it right back. And, uh, you know, and, and just a great teammate to the guys. You know, he keeps everybody kind of level-headed. Sure. You know, he yep. would see him talking to them. And, and sometimes, you know, it, and if practice, if somebody's, you know, kind of being dumb, he'll tell them that, you know, <laughs> you're being kind of dumb and, and go at it. So it's just a great kid, great competitor, and uh, fun to see him just grow as, as he grew up here. And, uh, and now that he's a senior and another guy that, you know, who should have maybe got more minutes for, just hard to get him in there and, in some of those situations, but the minutes he gave us this season were great. Some of those we needed some, and uh, and he filled that role well. And last one, uh, Mel Delwa. Mel, he was just a, you know, when he came, we knew he could play basketball. He kind of knew what he was doing, and we didn't change him a lot. We just kind of showed him the way we do it a little bit, but also very good competitor and and one of the most competitive guys in practice where, you know, loose ball, he's going to keep on going and getting it. He's going to push you. He's going to bump you a little bit. You bump him. I bump you back. But <laughs> And a good, I mean, three-point shooter. And down the stretch of the season, I was amazed with how you know easy it was for him to to dunk that thing yeah. just coming down the lane, you know, once he got into games. And and so it was fun to watch him in the JV and the varsity games when he, when he really got moving because he can get going. I mean, he just is a, a smooth player. That, that left hand catches people off guard and – it was uh, fun to get to know, and the first half of the season when he would always be asking questions, just little things, trying to, to figure out, you know, I think more just terminology of yeah. language of yeah. what it was we were, what we mean when we say this. And uh, so that was, it was fun, and he did a really good job of catching on. And even some of the times, you know, he was like, oh, I, I don't know this one or I don't know that one. But by the end of the season then, I'm like, hey, Bell, you ready to run this? Yep. I got it, you know, and, and he was good. So that was fun to see his confidence grow, and, and I hope he had a great time, you know, being here. We keep telling him he should try to just stay for another year because uh, there's a lot of colleges in this area could use a really good field goal kick. Well, and after that <laughs> JV tournament um, in uh, Clark, uh, we had a lot of people say, you know, can't can't you keep him another year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I said just a competitor of, hey, yeah. this is this is what we're doing today. I said when they went up there to play that, that's what they said he was just playing playing great and, and hustling and it was a fun fun time for those guys and, and we get a lot of those J V games where, you know, even the Sioux Valley's usually a big showdown because they always have a really yeah. good J V and, yeah. and the kids get fired up for that versus some of those when you're going to get smaller kids and they're like, Well, this is kind of more like practice yet we get to get to push and shove without it being our teammate who we're doing it with every day. And, and I think he really enjoyed that competitive side of it. And one thing I really noticed about him is he really um, – he knew what his role was on this team and he embraced that role. So he said uh, maybe – some days the guys didn't like him a lot because he was just going yep. at them all the yep. time. You you talked about Caden and and uh, Kaylin. Yep. Um, he said that he had kind of that relationship with Grant because uh, you told him you know go yeah. in there and, and yep. frustrate Grant. So and that's he was what doing he did. that, and it was uh, you know with Grant a lot of the time because we just don't have anybody of Grant's size. This right. Year. And that's where Mel was kind of playing in the post just by default in the JV because yeah. he was good in there and. So we're like, well, that's all right. But I know, yeah, him and uh, I'll be watching from the side. You know, he'll just be running through the lane, and I'll see Tracer Britt. They will literally put an elbow in his back and and just drill him as he's going through there for really no apparent reason. You know, and a few times I'll stop it and tell them, or usually when they come off, 
those guys, I'll say, hey, there's really no reason to do that. I know he's making you mad. He's trying to just make you better and compete. You know, you want to score over him. He wants to score over you. He doesn't want you to score over him. You know, he'd like to get on the floor and play also. So yeah. that is the way it is, and, and you can't do anything. You wouldn't do in a game where somebody's teeing you up for a foul because I think all those guys realize that I see more than they know that I see when yeah, that stuff goes yeah. on. But And Mel got to be pretty good at that. You know, A couple times I think he got one in the back of the head one day in practice. And, and even in the locker room, you know, he looked a little bit like he was kind of down some. And the other guys were in there, and, you know, I kind of said, you know, hey, this is kind of the way it is. You know, I saw that one, that one happened. And, you know, both those guys kind of look at each other and go, oh, yeah, you know, I was just tired of him running into me and <laughs> – <laughs> type sure. of a thing, you know. <laughs> so, you know, just kind of talk it out a little bit. But Mel seemed to be, a couple of times just after practice, he's like, oh, yeah, I know they they don't really mean bad, bad stuff. But, right. you know, they're just right. they're just mad. I'm like, yep, yeah, that, that's kind of the way it goes. But I said, you're doing what, we, what we're wanting you to do right now. Yeah, and I, I was proud of him that he, he kept doing that, that yep. he didn't get frustrated yep. with that. All right, so – Final question. I did not expect this to go 70 minutes, but I really <laughs> appreciate it. Uh, final question, Coach. You had the op- you've coached for a while now. You had the opportunity to coach both of your sons. Now that they're both graduated, have you thought about how much longer you'll keep going as the coach of the Bulldogs? We have a little bit. I said I know I'm in for another year. Uh, these guys have, you know, it's just it's kind of become a contagious thing for me. I don't super have time to do it, but – but yet, you know, we're like, well, we'll just keep on going with it and, sure. and see what we can build out of next year. And, and hopefully we can look forward down the road and see, you know, if we can get some teachers slash coaches in here back in the school system or what we can do to get, you know, a younger guy or just a little different look at things and sure. and that type of thing. And then I'll see where my role goes from there. You know, sure. I would I could go back to being an assistant coach. I could help out. I'm willing to kind of do anything. You know, at the in Aberdeen, a lot of guys were like, well, they saw my grandsons there hanging out with me. And they're like, yeah. well, eventually you can coach them if you just wait, you know, like another, <laughs> another 12, 13 years. Right. <laughs> I'm like, well, I know I can't make it that long. So. Sure. <laughs> sure. Again, this started out as a – you know, when Coach Hook uh, needed an assistant coach, when Mr. Altenberg moved to Harrisburg, because I had just retired from the girls, we had spent about seven, eight years doing that. Okay. And uh, I was like, you know, I'm getting busy enough with, I just want to, you know, the boys are coming up. I want to watch the boys. And and uh, when Mr. Altenberg left and Tom needed an assistant coach, because I had been out for a year, and he said, well, you could be my assistant. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I really, I really don't want to, you know, I really don't want to coach my boys. Sure. You know, I can, sure. I'm busy enough doing other stuff and, uh, they're like, well, no, it'll be good, you know? And, and then we knew that Rhett and Kalen, uh, Rhett's my nephew, uh, Cody Cavanaugh was my first cousin. Sure. All those guys are coming up and, you know, and I expected Tom to stick around and I never, never thought he would leave. So we did that for a year. And then Tom says the next summer when we're out at team camp, like, Hey, Dakota Wesleyan's offering me a too good to pass up sure. offer so yep. and then my first question was well who's going to be the head coach then <laughs> you know and he's like well I think you could do that I'm like no I don't want to do that <laughs> so then Marvin and I sent out a few emails to a, a few people that were on our list of hey you guys we would be willing to to entertain if you were interested in coming over but nobody was wanting to do that so then I agreed to do it and and uh, here we are now, and it's it's been fun. You know, it, it takes a lot of time, summer, winter. You know, winter I don't have a problem with it. Summer is a little harder, and, and the kids are willing to juggle with me. In sure. That one. So, so that's the best part is that they're, they're willing to juggle. But So anyway, I'm, I'm on board for next year, and then we'll, we'll address it for that and, and see how it goes. Well, we've sure enjoyed it, and here you are, uh, you know, five state tournaments later. And uh, worst you've done is second, so <laughs> – from an unwilling coach to uh, sort of a mini dynasty there for a while. Yeah, it's been fun. But, you know, you give us the, that many good kids, yeah. you know, and that are truly good kids, smart kids, academic all-state kids, you know, guys that just want to play. There just really hasn't been a lot of, you know, a lot of problem with those guys coming up. And sure. I didn't know how that would go the first few years when it's, you know, kids of the guys that I played with, cousins, you yeah. know, all everybody's yeah. pretty tight. I mean, you, if somebody wants you to know how they feel, they're going to tell enough people around town that it eventually gets back to you type yep. of thing. But, yep. you know, we've we've been able to get through that and address the few situations that have come up, and, and it's been good. You know, the, the guys, and it's probably harder here when the guys are, you know, sitting on my bench and they could be at some other town, you know, 
scoring 25 points sure, tonight, you know, sure. but they know that, hey, maybe they're a 500 team and, and we know we wanted to be as good as we could be and, and try to get there. And it's just been fun that we've made all of the, the Sodak 16s and since it started and all yeah. that stuff. So it's just been a, it's been a fun run and to go out and compete. And it's just, you know, we compare it to when I grew up here and, and all the teams when I was a little kid watching and there's some guys in Aberdeen from the 81 team, and I remember going to Rapid and, and watching that game, and I think they got upset in the first round by Clark, you know, a, a rival and sure. just a weird, you know, and I remember that game as a kid, the, the whole nine yards, and that yeah. was uh, just a crazy, I was just a fifth grader at that point. So just a uh, fun basketball tradition here. We, we want to keep it going, you know. For me, I'm a guy that likes nothing to change. Let's do everything the same. Sure. But yep. We know what's going to eventually, and uh, – but we'll we'll keep it going, and you know, big big credit of that goes to the past few years. All my assistants, Coach Haugen, the first year did a really nice job, and Dustin was on our bench at that time, yeah. and now he's just become kind of more more and more involved all the time. And then Coach Geyer, when she was willing to help us as she comes back, you know, for somebody to be willing to fly back and forth from Texas a couple times a year just so she can make stretches of games, sure. Is, is just a huge sacrifice by her, but she does that also just because she was a bulldog, and and you know, and all that ties back to to Marv. That's where that the commitment, loyalty, you know, how we play, how we do stuff, that still just goes back to him to this day. Absolutely. Well, coach, I appreciate your time. Thank you. And uh, good season. Thanks for uh, talking to us. And uh, yeah, that was a lot longer than I expected. Yeah, but, that's uh, all right. I, it's I always really fun to talk to you. It. I said, well, we'll try to get you on the list with the SDPB guys. Maybe you can uh, sit at their table next year. And yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. You know, it was a different experience being just, uh, you know, a normal fan. Yep. Um, I, I love sitting behind the bench and watching you guys coach. I, right. I really enjoy that. I know there's some um, of the, like the Pentagon streams, you know, their, their TV guys are right by one of the benches. Yeah. So I could, like, the Pentagon, I can literally hear what the guy is saying. So I'm, I'm sure. sure he's hearing what I'm <laughs> yelling, what I <laughs> yeah. tell Dustin, what I'm going. And yep. It's just fun. But you do such a great job, too, that Thank everybody you. loves to, to listen to those streams and get them on. And, and like I said, a few of the films that I'm able to get back when you're broadcasting them, you know, the boys really like to watch them that way, too. So, sure. So thank you for you putting in the time. Yeah, I get some grief every once in a while for uh, getting on the kids a little bit or something. <laughs> <laughs> but but hey, that, uh, that's kind of the way it is. That's, it. The yeah. way, that's the way it should be. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Well, I appreciate it, Coach. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. You bet.